After working on enough sites across Wix, Squarespace, Shopify, and WordPress, you start to see a pattern. Now, platforms like Wix and Squarespace, they control your URLs, your load speed, and how Google reads your site. And when something goes wrong, you have almost no way to fix it. Now, one small mistake in a closed builder can tank your rankings and you might not even know why. WordPress works differently. You control the hosting, the speed, the structure, the URLs, and the signals Google uses to understand your content. You can actually fine tune the parts that matter for SEO instead of hoping that the platform doesn't break something behind the scenes. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through how SEO works on WordPress versus other platforms. The technical issues that hurt rankings on both and why WordPress gives you more room to fix the things that Google pays attention to the most. And before we get into it, this video is sponsored by Hostinger. I've used them for years. And once we talk about how much hosting affects SEO, you'll see why good hosting disappears into the background while bad hosting breaks everything around it. So SEO always starts with performance because Google simply won't rank a site it struggles to load. On WordPress, you control everything that affects speed. The hosting, the caching, the theme, how your images load, how your scripts load, even how your CSS is delivered. Now, on a closed builder like Squarespace, Wix, or Shopify, the platform decides all of that behind the scenes, and you kind of just deal with whatever comes out the other end. The reason I call them closed builders is just because you can't really touch anything underneath. Stuff like how your scripts load or how the builder handles caching isn't up to you, and that matters because those things are what directly affects your speed and your ranking. They make the decisions for you and you're basically stuck with whatever they spit out. Now I realized how important that was when I built a promo page on Squarespace. It was one of those situations where I didn't want to think much, just drag, drop, publish. And the design, it came out fine, but when I tested it, the entire page just felt sluggish. You'd load it and sections would literally jump into place just a second too late. And that's called layout shift and Google hates it. Now on Squarespace, it was happening because the platform was loading multiple layers of code that I never asked it to do. I rebuilt the exact same page on WordPress with proper hosting, didn't change the layout or the images, and the problem disappeared. There was no shifting, no lag, and my web vitals went from red to green immediately. And that's when you understand that the issue isn't what the page looks like, it's the builder underneath it. Closed builders bundle everything together and ship it whether you need it or not. WordPress only loads what you tell it to load. Another thing people don't realize is how performance affects business. Look, I've seen sites lose conversions simply because the builder was adding extra JavaScript behind every button or animation. You don't see the code, but you feel it the second you test the page. And that's why WordPress feels different, not because it's magical, but because you're not fighting the tool that's supposed to help you. Now, once speed is handled, the next thing Google cares about is whether your pages actually make sense together. And this is where WordPress starts doing things closed builders just can't match. WordPress automatically creates categories, tags, author pages, and attachment pages in the background. Most beginners don't even know these pages exist, but Google sees all of them. And if you don't manage it, Google crawls everything and doesn't know which pages matter and which ones are just noise. Now, crawling is when Google sends its bot to your website to explore your pages, understand what's there, and decides what should be added to its search index. It doesn't guess what your site is about. It learns by literally visiting your pages the same way a user would now just much faster and in a more structured way imagine google is a delivery driver checking a building a crawl session is the amount of time the driver is willing to spend walking around and checking rooms before leaving if your site is slow confusing or keeps timing out google gets annoyed and just leaves early that means the driver checks fewer rooms per visit and fewer rooms checked means fewer pages get added to google's index and fewer indexed pages also means weaker seo I still remember publishing a post once and waiting for Google to index it. So instead of indexing the article, Google indexed the tag page that linked to it. Another time, Search Console showed me dozens of attachment pages, these tiny auto-generated URLs created for each image on the site. Nobody would ever visit these pages, but Google saw them as real content. Once enough of that piles up, Google has no idea what the main content on your site actually is. And that's why structure matters. Structure isn't some SEO trick. It's the map of your site. It's Google's way of figuring out what your topics are, how your pages connect, and which ones deserve attention. If that map is messy, Google fills in the blanks on its own, and it's almost never choosing what you want. WordPress lets you clean that map. You can fix your URL so Google sees them clearly. A URL like photography slash best camera lenses tells Google the topic before it even loads the page. A messy builder URL 
with question marks, random numbers, or auto-generated tags, it just makes Google guess. Now, internal links are the same story. I've seen posts jump in rankings just because I added links to other related pages that were sitting orphaned. Now, once Google understands how your ideas fit together, it starts ranking everything more confidently. Now, breadcrumbs help too. When Google sees a path like home to photography to lens guides, it gets the hierarchy instantly. And your sitemap backs that up by pointing Google towards the pages that actually matter instead of letting it crawl in circles. And this is also where hosting speed ends up doing more than just making your site feel quick. It affects how fast Google understands your entire site. When I moved one of my older blogs to Hostinger, the content stayed exactly the same, but Google suddenly started crawling way more pages per session. Hostinger uses something called Lightspeed, which is basically a faster web server that handles requests more efficiently. On my old host, Google would keep slowing down or timing out halfway through a crawl. With Lightspeed, those delays disappeared. So Google could actually finish the job in one go. I published a post in the afternoon and it was indexed the same day. Now before that, I always waited about two days. And that was the moment I realized Hosting is doing half the SEO work in the background. And if you ever want to try it for yourself, check out the link in the description below and use our site starters code to knock an extra 10% on top of their current deals. And just to be clear, it's an affiliate link, but you don't pay anything extra. In fact, you get a discount and it helps support the channel. So feel free to take advantage of that. Now, after performance and structure, the next thing Google cares about is what each page actually means. People call this on-page SEO, but it's really just clarity. On WordPress, you control the title, the H1, the URL, and the signals Google uses to understand the topic. Closed builders often tie these things together or they restrict what you can change. If something sends the wrong signal, well, you're stuck with it. I had that issue with an article about beginner Shopify apps. My title was too broad and the builder I was using forced a weird URL format that I couldn't change. Google got confused and started ranking my page for Shopify app login. Totally wrong intent, completely wrong audience. When I rebuilt the page on WordPress, I fixed the title and cleaned the URL, the misranking disappeared. Now your intro matters too. Google wants topic confirmation fast. I once built a travel guide on a closed builder that insisted on dropping a huge image and social share bar above the actual text. Google kept reading the page as image first, content second. When I rebuilt the post on WordPress and put the intro where it needed to be, the ranking settled almost immediately. Headers, internal links, file names, Alt text, WordPress gives you control over all the small details that help Google connect the dots. Some closed builders rename files automatically or bury the alt text setting in a hidden panel. You only notice when Google keeps misreading your images. The more control you have, the easier clarity becomes. By this point, Google's deciding which page actually deserves to rank. And that almost always comes down to search intent, what the person actually wants. If someone searches for the the best mirrorless cameras, they want comparisons, pros and cons, and opinions. If they search for a lens cleaning kit, they want products they can buy, not an essay. WordPress makes this easier because you can shape the page exactly the way the search requires. If you need a comparison table, a product grid, or a breakdown section, you can build it. I've run into situations on closed builders where I needed a simple comparison layout and the builder just wouldn't let me do it without hacking something together. You end up forcing the content into a structure that doesn't match the intent and Google sees the mismatch. People skim, they bounce fast, and they reward pages that deliver answers quickly. Clean formatting, short paragraphs, helpful internal links. WordPress lets you control all of that. Closed builders often lock certain layout decisions, so sometimes you simply cannot format the page the way that a search requires. Now, refreshing content is the same story. Updating text is easy everywhere, but updating the structure behind the page is where closed builders hit a wall. If you can't control the URL, the layout, or the internal linking, the update only fixes half the problem. And that's why WordPress consistently ranks better over time. Not because it's magically boosting your SEO, but because it lets you match intent properly, fix things properly, and adjust as Google evolves. At the end of the day, WordPress SEO isn't about chasing tricks or hacks. It's really just about helping Google understand your site as clearly as your readers do. Clean structure, fast hosting, simple navigation, and content that actually answers something. Once those pieces click into place, SEO stops feeling like guesswork and starts feeling like momentum. 
And if you want to be clear on the technical side, good hosting does have the heavy lifting for you. And that's why I keep going back to hosting or it's fast, stable, and doesn't get in the way when Google comes crawling through your pages. And don't forget, if you want to earn that extra 10% off, you can use the site starters code at the link below. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, feel free to leave a question in the comments, like the video, or subscribe for more WordPress breakdowns. I'll see you in the next one.